I mean, you're looking at it in a vacuum and we can't really look at things in a vacuum. We can just look at all this data mm -hmm. and kind of make conclusions. We're, we're kind of going closing and closing and closing the gap with all the data we're seeing, but the closing of the gap is going in the direction that it helps, not that it doesn't. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you want that to be your position that there's not enough data, I mean, that's completely fine and- No, that, no, 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 my position, my, and I wanna make it really clear. First off, I think, I wanna re re reiterate, I think that you want to improve the quality of life for transgenders, and I think you want society to be as functional and tolerant as possible. I believe that's your objective, and that's certainly my objective. Um, so, uh, no, my position isn't there's not enough data. I want to be very clear, because I know a lot of times people will have people from opposing viewpoints and sort of feign middle ground. No, my position is that there is such overwhelming data right now uh, that it's not good. Now, it, it, what you just said there, I do agree with, of course. People who are bullied, people who are mistreated, people who are abused probably have increased rates of suicidality. I think we would both agree with that. But the truth is that minority groups in general actually have lower suicide rates. For example, blacks compared to whites. I don't think anyone here would say that black people are less likely to be victims of hate crimes. Nowhere else do you find the attempted suicide rate in society outside of modern transgenderism and wanting what's best for them, wanting uh, a, a higher quality of life. I don't think that pumping people with hormones or going through sex reassignment, it's, it's, it's clearly not the solution. That's my, my stance. Here's where I want to correct you on looking at other minorities and why that okay. doesn't make sense. The LGBT community is the only minority where a lot of that transphobic abuse is actually coming from inside their very own family. It's not just society. I mean, blacks aren't giving other black people within their family um, racism. It's, it, if it is, it's extremely rare. But the, the amount of abuse and violence that you even see against LGBT people within their own family is much, much higher. And so you have to see that in context as well. Um, okay, a couple of things there. Uh, I disagree. I think you see all kinds of abuse, for example, in black American families, let alone fatherlessness. Uh, and, and then it would be true across the board with you just kind of lump it all in. And we've had a lot of gay activists on this program who don't like the LGBTQ AAIP now. And I'm sure you don't like some of the parts that are being added to the acronym as, as the T. They don't like the T just sort of piggybacking on the LGB. Um, they don't have the same suicide rates gays and lesbians. It's not even mm -hmm. close. It's exclusive to the transgender community. And if you look at paranoid schizophrenics, that's where you would have a, a similar suicide rate. You don't see it in any other minority group, including, by the way, minority groups throughout history who were woefully abused. So um, I, I just, I don't, I, I don't think that holds water. I want to decrease the suicide rate, but I don't think it's because they're being ostracized by society. Well, I mean, also when you're looking at the time frame of uh, 1973 to 1988 versus 1989 to 2011, you also have to admit that things have gotten a lot better civil rights wise for the LGBT community. So again, you can't look at it in a vacuum and just say We're American just slaves at didn't have the same suicide rate. They didn't have the same kind of uh, abuse from within their family. Very rarely from within their family their own family, they didn't. They often didn't know who their family was. They'd get the bullwhip every now and then from Whitey in a cotton field of Missouri and uh, be fortunate that it wasn't worse than that. Thing. Let's just, just. I know, just, yes, understand. just to be clear, Julie Ray Goldstein I'm, I'm is not, not pro-slavery. I'm not endorsing either. I'm just saying that you, it's not a fair uh, a comparison. That's all I'm saying, okay? Don't, I think it's a know. very unfair comparison to uh, American slaves. Yeah, I think they had it much worse than transgenders in 2018. Uh, well, I... I I actually would agree. Okay. I, I, I definitely agree on that. Uh, I think things are getting better. I mean, we have more health care. So we do have it better than slaves back then. I, why did we get into this? <laughs> well, I was just saying because you were talking about suicide rates. And, and, and again, I'm using an extreme example to make a point. And it's, the point is, is, is still made. Nowhere else do you see this kind of a suicide rate. And I think that matters. When you say things like, and I know you're, well, well, actually this would be a, a perfect transition to the next topic where I, I know I think you've, mm -hmm. you've criticized my position. When you say let's give kids puberty blockers or hormone replacement therapy, when you say the solution is gender reassignment surgery, and you're looking at a suicide rate that doesn't really get better, even in the face of these wildly invasive procedures and inter interventions. At some point we have to say, okay, maybe this isn't the solution. And because I want a higher quality of life for transgender people across the board, 
That's why I line up the way I do. That's why I think that gender dysphoria should be treated a different way uh, outside of hormones, injections, or um, plastic surgery. Can we acknowledge that maybe systems of power are different than just race, gender? Maybe Leslie Jones has more power to harass with her millions of followers than a straight white cis male who only has a handful. Uh, no, abuse is about the way that people use the platform, not, not how many people follow it. The potential for abuse. Because you've yeah, talked that about comes power down to and systems of if power If somebody has hate in their heart. So, yeah, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. If you say hateful things, you're abusive. You've talked systemically about social media entities needing to assist with and protect marginalized classes, correct? Yes. Okay, so my point is this, abuses of power can be significantly more harmful with someone who may be a black female, like let's say Leslie Jones, and she creates a targeted harassment campaign, or take your pick, uh, as opposed to a straight, cis, white male. Should that not be taken into account equally when enforcing these rules? No, the, the content of the abuse should be Assuming what's focused on. Assuming the content is this. Well, no, because you're writing your article about marginalized classes and systems of oppression and how you have not done enough to correct this, how white males need to do more to correct this. Correct? Incorrect. So, so do you think that you have less power despite your ethnicity and your uh, gender than Wesley Jones because, Absolutely. because she has more Twitter followers? Absolutely. You think that because she has more Twitter yes, yes. Let me answer. You're subject to less Let me abuse. do the opposite of what Why you're doing you here, Josh. On the street Let me and see if I don't need you to. Get I can just go on. By abuse. I don't need to. I can just go on Twitter. We're talking about abuses of Twitter rules here, Josh. Remember, this is your right. article, not That's mine. That's why we're so trying would to Leslie create Jones so that be or not, or not be able to abuse these guidelines more effectively and more powerfully than, say, my producer, myself? My point is, you use a disingenuous example, as we've just discussed, and you look at everything through the prism of race or gender. You're not taking everything no, into account, and you want the, people who share your opinion to be determined. You're looking at it through, the, through the, uh, the lens of race and gender. I'm saying that abuse is abuse. Okay. Abuse is abuse. So we've just acknowledged on the platform of Twitter that someone who would have significantly more power on Twitter would be capable of significantly greater abuses. No, we're saying that the content of the abuse is what matters. It doesn't matter. I'm assuming the content is followers. the same. The, the content is the same. I'm, po I'm doing the same kind of thing. A targeted harassment campaign, Leslie Jones is. Let's say... Uh, Leslie Jones isn't, and you know that. Okay, and, like, I'm using it as, a, I'm using as, it as an example. Abusive campaigns you is are ridiculous. suggesting that it is... I didn't say she did. Josh. So why don't you pick an alt-right figure who's uh, coordinated one of these abuse figure, uh, these abuse campaigns, who has lots of followers, and you can use them as your example. Okay, you pick one. No, I'm, I'm saying you're the one who's, who's picking random you people. You pick an example. You seem to have Jones, one in so mind. I was using him as an example because you've written about Leslie no, Jones. I, so you like pick said, an alt-right figure. You're the one figure. picking Leslie. So if you, why don't you pick a, another, uh, another figure uh, I don't know I'm not alt I don't, I don't know I'm not alt-right. Who actually does abuse. I don't know I'm not alt-right. So you can pick one, and we could compare it and use a hypothetical scenario. Okay, Take so, anyone you want. So you don't know, and, but you're just randomly picking random people. But you said you don't no, know. No, I didn't randomly pick someone and say that she committed any kind of abuse on Twitter. I was talking about systems of power, as you write about in your article, saying that as a white male, you haven't done enough to correct this. You effectively call to action other white males to correct this injustice online. Correct or incorrect? Am I misrepresenting you there? Yeah, I think okay. people with power should speak up for victims and those who are abused. And you believe that someone has more power simply because he is white and straight online than someone who has 800 times the followers and reach and financial uh, backing. No, what I'm saying is that the content of someone's abuse is what needs to be considered, not how many followers they have. Yes, the content should be considered. So content being equal, let's say alt-right person, okay, does the exact same thing that I don't know, Leslie Jones, let's say, Will Smith, I don't know if he's on Twitter. I'm trying to take any minority here. I'm not attributing <laughs> it to any specific minority. Maybe he's not on Twitter. I have no Maybe idea. Maybe it's James not about Smith. minority. Maybe you just pick two white people, one with more followers. And no, I'm, I'm picking it because people. it's your example where you call on people to fix these systems of oppression. You specifically call on <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, and white male writers 
to rectify the situation. That's what you write about, based on race. Your entire article is written through the prism of race. And what I'm saying no, is when you're not. Willing, yes. you, you read race into everything, apparently. Uh, but yeah, I agree. White Have men you not written do need that to as, stand up for those who are abused. Okay. Do and you, you don't agree? see that as a, you don't see that as a statement based entirely on race. Do you agree that the the white men who are some of the most powerful people in the world, the people who uh, are naturally advantaged by the current unjust systems, you think that, that I, I just don't understand. You don't think that they should stand up for victims? No, I think everybody should. Right, but should white men stand up for victims? They would be included amongst everybody. Yeah, but do you think that they might have outsized uh, responsibility because they have outsized power? No, I just base it on the content. Right, exactly. So, uh, so we both agree then that what matters. Right, we just base it on the content. You just brought up. So, why would white men could not be less relevant? That's my point. We agree. Whether it's a white man or a black female, the abuse is the abuse, and the abuse of power can be more powerful if this person has a much greater platform. And my point is, your call to action, as you just did now, I'm glad that we've clarified, is to white men to correct these institutional forms of discrimination. And that is the presupposition yep. of your new rules and guidelines when dictating what speech is and is not allowed. And it doesn't no, take into account individuals. I just think that white men do need to stand up for victims of abuse. Right. How about good men? Uh, yeah, all good men need so to why stand you up lead for with victims of men? abuse. Why not good men? Do you not consider because yourself a monster? Because they are them? the ones who are unnaturally privileged in this system, and so they need to be able to, they need to be the ones willing to stand up, whether it's sexual assault and harassment, whether it's online abuse. White men who control a lot of things in this world do need to stand up and stand with victims. That right. seems pretty reasonable, you know. It's the same way that you know major politicians who hold power in countries around the world need to stand up for victims of abuse and for human rights. Okay, so would you believe when Barack Obama was president that this man was more powerful than, say, the white man tilling the cornfields? Um, I'm not sure about your, what I would say is that the president is more powerful than an average citizen, yes. A black president, again, because you said white men need to fix this problem. I said, how about good men, right? A black president, Barack Obama, would he or and you just use politicians as an example. I'm following your logic trail. Yeah, We're serving the sure common master. But he sure did. Whereas what most white men have not, or a lot of white men have not and stood up for, against problems there the way is. that they need to. There so, it is. Yeah. He, so this there, is and this is, there it is. <laughs> this is what you've written about in your article, correct? Yeah. Yes. And you don't see that as being written through the prism of race. No, I'm, I'm okay. saying that white okay. men need Good. to Good, that's fine. We can let that stand where it is. I, we abuse. disagree. I think that saying white men specifically and only seeing systems of power uh, through the prism of race is seeing it through the prism of race. You don't. So perfect world here. But what you're trying Let's to do on. is Let's a race on. race as if it's not a problem in this country. And that's just ridiculously false. No, I didn't do and that. So if you really think that everyone is already treated equally and so everyone should stand up equally for abuse, then you clearly have a misguided view of the world. You don't think that everyone Everyone should equally stand up in the face of abuse. I sure do, but I sure don't think that everyone is equally privileged to stand up, and that's why those with more power. I don't believe that everyone is equally up. privileged. On that, we agree. I simply don't see privilege exclusively through the lenses of race and gender. My point is there are people who can be abused on these social media platforms simply for having unpopular views, regardless of whether white, black, gay, st straight, trans, male, female. That's my point, and it happens every day. And you see that all the time. Unpopular viewpoints, it's a pendulum that swings, for example. You know, right now, yours would be less popular amongst many people in the tech community or people with social media who would advocate for more open platforms. I think your views shouldn't be censored. To use your words, I think you should be as free to express it as I am. And I would like to see oh, rules from Facebook and Twitter. That. And I would absolutely, even if you, even if you at replied me a thousand times a day, which would likely be a violation of their guidelines, I would defend your right to do it. You're the one advocating the opposite, and you're advocating the opposite through your article, again, exclusively through the prism of race and gender. And you're right. I'm advocating against abuse. You nailed it. Yes. Yes, you're advocating against abuse and attributing abuse exclusively to uh, people of a given race, or gender no. and a system of classes. You just asked not white. Attributing, yeah, listen, we're not, not going to so let's, let's go back. Race. Let's I'm finalize just on this. Closing thoughts. What <laughs> happens in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and your perfect world? What happens right now? What is YouTube, for example, missing? 
Um, my article was about Facebook and Twitter. I think okay, YouTube what is has Facebook and Twitter? Complicated missing? problems. Um, Facebook needs to create uh, policies that understand where privilege lies and does not protect people uh, or does not allow abuse of certain races just because there's a modifier like age attached to them. Yeah. And Twitter needs to create better rules to prevent re abuse through the reply system. Sure. Yeah. That's well, you write for a major publication like TechCrunch and uh, we're an independent outlet. So I would love to see you go on your own and see where the privilege lies. That's my point. We just need to let free speech be free speech for all, regardless of race, gender orientation, then it becomes a really simple simple issue. May sound reductive. Hey, maybe it is. Either yeah, free speech or reductive because it the sounds board. like it means that people who are abused don't need any special help. Yeah, I know. People when you hear it that way, if you hear it through the ears of race, yeah, yeah you would hear me saying that people should be right. abused. Um, you don't believe the Second Amendment is for all people to protect against. I want to make clear. I said that. Twice. I want to make clear. I'm asking. That's why I said I want to make clear. I'm asking. Oh, what do you believe the Second Amendment is for then? I think the Second Amendment was written at a time when we were worried about being attacked by other major nations. We were a brand new nation starting out. We didn't have a lot to defend ourselves. And the Second Amendment was written so that everybody, everybody had a weapon in case England came back, in case Spain tried to invade us. That's why it was written. So it wasn't written. So the fa there would be no proof of the founding fathers admitting that even they themselves could become tyrannical. And it was written to protect the people from even them, like George Washington. He's doing hypotheticals now. No, I'm they saying this, these are actual quotes. I have them up at ladderwithcrater.com. Okay, let me say. Are you denying? Uh, you know, I'm not going to interrupt you anymore. Uh, you okay, then let me, let me finish. Yeah, these are actual quotes Wait. from the founding fathers. They said, of course, it is for the entire people, and no government will right. disarm its own people. The people have the right to protect themselves against even us, the government. These are quotes from George Washington, George Mason, Thomas right. Jefferson, Madison. Right. So they made right. sure it wasn't, well, you just said about England, it was about the United States government as well. So George Washington said, is a fascinating you character. You said it was about England, and I said, you, you just think said that. England attack us. Uh, you said it was written because they thought of outside hey, threats. Hey. Spain, right. England. I said, no, it was written, and they specifically wrote that it was also for domestic threats, including themselves. So your only defense on 32,000 Americans dead is a Second Amendment and something that was written 200 years ago. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. Because that's all you're saying. So no, you're gonna no, I've also so, I've said that I don't believe you that your said, proposal would you, decrease gun crime, uh, and you just but, lied about the Second Amendment. No, I did not lie about no, it. Did. I did not. You said no, it was I written did. in a time for outside threats in Spain and England, and I just gave you examples of how it was written for domestic tyranny, including by George Washington, Jefferson, Madison, exactly. Mason, so Adams. They said it could be us. That's why you so, all need to be armed. So, so it wasn't think, written for foreign entities. It was so written for the United think, States. Uh, uh, yes, but it, no, it wasn't originally. No, that no, it actually wasn't. Yes, it, it was, was. actually it, it, for a tyrannical government like England. No. Or do you think we have a tyrannical government? No, it didn't government? say like England. Just like you said, do what does it say? Think, do you think we have a tyrannical government? No, that's the, again, you, we've already answered that question. Could Ask it be it. potentially? Absolutely. Oh, Any government so. can become tyrannical. Yes, absolutely. Okay, this argument, by the way, it would have to be our military would have to take our guns. Uh, ain't going to happen. Civilian military families wouldn't happen. And why do you think it wouldn't happen? And, and let's say if they were tyrannical, do you why think, do you think it wouldn't lie? happen? Uh, because I know the military families. I've actually went to Iraq twice, and I will tell you one thing there's not a it's, chance it's not in an argument. Oh, it is an argument. I have a colonel. Oh, I, have, I have actually. The reason uh, they can't is because of an entirely faith. armed populace. That's why they can't right. take away everyone's guns. So you're saying that our military, if we weren't armed, would turn on us. Okay, got it. No. So move it. Well, that's what you just said. You, you, you didn't say it, but you actually, you're, you're alluding to that. Well, didn't, did, you're, you're alluding to that. But okay, let me finish. So no, no, hold on a second. Didn't you just talk about former military who shot five in Dallas? Uh, m my father-in-law was an army colonel and did oh, security. You're talking about former military shot yep. someone in Dallas. So there are some people who would be willing to do it, right? Not all, but some. Shot cops. Oh, are you are you bringing up a psychopath that actually? Are you bringing up a psychopath well, that? My had point PTSD? is, he was former military. Are you comparing our military to a psychopath. The reason, with PTSD? no, you the say reason. All our got PTSD and a no, psychopath? No, I didn't say that. You say, said because you, you used a personal example saying you've no military. Listen, I've entertained the troops as well. I've gone over to Guantanamo Bay. I've done the tours. Shooter in Dallas. What a psychopath. Are you serious? Is that the first time I bring up military? You compare, so you're comparing all our military plus my no. kind of who. No, I'm not. Who's the bombs? No, and, I'm not. It, it, then why would you bring that up first? Because you said, I know people who wouldn't do it. I know people who would. Not one of our military would do it. He wasn't in the military. He had PTSD. The reason there is no so, possibility of that is because set. of the Second Amendment. It's amazing how hard you have to backpedal to fight your argument. But let me finish this. What, I, look, what backpedal? I, wanna, I didn't backpedal anything. Clear something. I want to be clear something. We can agree on something. I believe Americans should have guns. I believe it's in our DNA. I believe it goes back to the beginning of our country. And I believe to get rid of them not only would be uh, untenable, but impossible. So here's what I'll say. So we put together... Uh, 
a gun registry. Everybody has guns. Yeah, I'm already uh, against we, it, but go. I got, I got it. I know, I got it. I got it. But here's the thing: thirty-two thousand Americans dead. What are you willing to do to keep your guns and stop that? What so, are you? As, yeah. I, well, okay. No, I'm, I'm willing to do. Let me finish. Please let me finish. Well, yeah, I thought you just asked me a question. That's why I didn't mean to interrupt. You asked a question. Go ahead. It's, it's it's just put it rhetorical. Just leave it rhetorical. Okay. I'm so, just trying to make it sure. I, I'm going to talk for a minute, then you can talk, and I appreciate the time you're giving me. i got to tell you, man, I really appreciate this. I hate that I'm yelling. You know what I hate more than anything? I hate being part of the din of the uh, of left and right or whatever, because I'm not left. I'm an independent 100%. I've got, my cars do more damage to the ozone than, than anything I own, so, uh, so let me finish. So here's what I'm saying. We get... Uh, to stop the 32,000 dead and to stop crazy people from getting guns like my mother, like the guy in Dallas, like Jared Loeffner, like all these people, we have some serious common sense gun rules in place. Number one, uh, federal registry. I know you don't like it, but whatever. I got it. That's what it's pitching. Well, it's not common actually, sense. That's the point. You can't say it's common sense if there's a valid argument against it. Go ahead. No, it is common sense, nope. 100%. Deadly weapons should be registered. Cars mm -hmm. are registered. Everyone brings up the car gun argument. Cars are registered. Cars are not a constitutional right. And a car uh, actually is far more dangerous than a, than, a, than a gun and actually is more dangerous actively. You cannot that. have a gun and use it. You cannot have a car and use it passively. I can have a gun at my hip, to use your term, and um, to use your example, if I do have a gun in the studio, and it's passive. It is a, is a threat to no one. I cannot drive from point A to point B without putting other people at risk. Cars are much more dangerous. Nope. Billions of miles done every week on the roads, three feet apart from road, doing 80 miles an hour, totally passive. So anyway, moving on. No, that's not uh, true. That is true. That's not true. It's not, a pass it's not a passive endeavor, is my point. Someone is inherently at risk when you are driving on a freeway. That's Someone why there are far more car fatalities. No one is at risk for statistic? a firearm resting on my hip. No one you else are is at greater risk, but they are if I'm driving on the road, period. That's Come right. on, we well, both acknowledge that. Let's find that common ground. Oh. We don't we don't acknowledge that actually. Okay. Statistically, That's owning a gun sense. makes you sixty percent more likely to get shot or shoot somebody near you. That's how it is. So move it on. So well, okay, well, what are the chances of hurting someone if you drive a vehicle or getting into a vehicle crash? I, I've been driving for forty years, and I'm I don't I'm in anybody. Okay. But will we acknowledge that probably years. higher than sixty percent driving? The chance Not of even hurting close. somebody. Okay. Not even close. You, if you compare okay. miles, I'm to against the registry. But here's my point. You don't get to say common <laughs> sense. Uh, yeah, but, but here's the point. Here's the point. Here's why it matters. Here's why it matters. Real quick, and then I'll let you finish. This is let very important. You. This is very important, Chris. If we want to find common ground, genuinely, okay. Mm -hmm. When you say I don't want to be yelling, I don't want to be. I don't want to be a part of this, okay. But part of the in part of the rest of the idiots that yell back and forth, like we've been doing. When you say that, right? Respectfully, there is no way to have a dialogue when you say. Everyone should support these common sense uh, measures, and if people, because that. if people don't, okay, well, if you say common sense, what no, that I'm implies, well, let me say, what it implies that someone else doesn't have any common sense if they oppose it. When you call someone a pussy, when you come yeah, on laughing, was... when, you, when you, you say someone's running and ducking, whereas you know as well as I that there are scheduling issues, when you say you're going to make someone cry, no, the no, point no, is, no, you, if no, you want to no, have no, a discussion, these aren't steps say, that are taken. And in this thing, you're the only one who's been yelling, but go ahead and finish your point. The statistic that people like to bring up a lot when discussing male privilege is the pay gap, which I know is something that a lot of conservatives claim is not a true thing. But it was the Department of Labor, I believe here. I, I have it right in front of me here. The Department of Labor um, put out a, that statistic that said 78 um, cents of every dollar is what women make. Um, more They make that compared to men. And the numbers degrade when you talk about women of color, um, Hispanic women, black women, they make less than that. I know you said we can argue about stats who are blue in the face. So I don't want to take mine. I think, it, I think it was the Department of Justice, by the way. Um, but sure. I'll take yours because obviously uh, let people know there's nothing, nothing up my sleeves. I'm not, I didn't yeah. feed you that stat. Um, totally. You're talking about uh, right now the 78% pay gap. Okay, and you said it, it, it then... Yeah degrades if you go to women of color. Now, mm -hmm. let me take your stat because you said, okay, it gets even wider if you take women of color. How does that sure. gap narrow? Why have virtually all reputable economists said that it's a myth? Because you just accounted for variables very, very intelligently that women of color, when you add different variables, you know, that pay gap may be 68%, but that pay gap becomes 4%, 2%, 0%, sometimes a plus one or 2% for women when what? Are you talking about different industries? No, nope, not even just that. See, that stat that you're talking about simply takes the average income 
mm -hmm. of full-time working women versus men. Now, when you take into account not only industry, but more specifically job, more specifically hours worked, travel, mm -hmm. how long they've been in that position, that gap disappears. As a matter of fact, there are new studies coming out, particularly in science and tech, uh, engineering, you know, STEM, where women make more. They're certainly admitted at vastly higher rates because women choose not to go into those fields, so we now have provided incentives for them to, where they actually make as much as men. So you can't use stats one way and say, well, and then that gap widens if they're black, and then that gap widens if they're, well, hold on a second, that gap narrows if they're both in the medical field. That gap is now non-existent if the female and male are both doctors working the same hours in the same state. There is no gap. Sure, but you could all, there are also statistics that show that women are promoted less because employers are afraid that they're going to get pregnant and that they're not going to stick around for all that often. Um, they're not given raises at, mo at the same pace that men tend to be. Do women like, get, do women get pregnant more often than men? Yeah, but that's not something that should be held against us because it cuts both ways. Women are, you know, told. I, I'm sorry, but I it's it's not something that should factor into whether or not I get a promotion about whether I may be pregnant down the line. How you much money you will cost sick. or make the company should not be factored into how much money I pay you. You can, God forbid, get sick and have to take a long leave of absence from your company should that be factored but it is in not a statistical 50 50 likelihood sometimes more when you get over the age of 30 that i'm going to get sick it is a statistical likelihood that most women this is where feminists disconnect from most women want to make babies most women want to have babies and so women end up leaving the workforce for at least nine See, months i would I would argue against that. That okay. is an opinion that most women want to have babies. I think that society puts a lot of pressure More on women than men? to have babies. More than men? More than men? A hundred percent. Because women are, we are damned if we do, damned if we don't. If we decide that we want to have babies, you just said we're going to be costing the company more. So we are not getting raises at, as often. If we choose not to have female, uh, not to have um children we are as i think it was who was that senator here i have it written down it was that um um courtland sykes said that he did not want his daughters to be career obsessed banshees so that is an example of the idea of what women are if we choose not to have children and we pr choose to pursue a career we are career obsessed and banshees. do you think do you think that's, a, that you think that's exclusive does not to exist for men do you think that's exclusive to women? You think it's exclusive of yes. women that people hate their bosses? No, I don't think it's exclusive no, to I'm women. Not and that uh, they, again, a statistical they likelihood. Well, you from? said you talked about this banshees. Yeah, I think that's actually. I think that's a pretty funny example. I'd probably describe a lot of bosses who I had, including some at Fox News, as banshees. Men or women, screeching banshees. Not big fans that's, of them. But the point is, uh, I think you just said damned his... if you do, damned if you don't. I just heard that women had a choice. Guess what a man has? Damned if you do. And guess what? Do. Because we don't get to have babies. We don't get leave. There isn't maternity leave. And I know you can point to examples like Sweden and places where men do have paternity leave and they don't contribute anything other than occasionally a new form of birth control every century. But we're talking about here in the United States of America. I certainly would and not I consider that, that patriarchy. And I you should have paternity leave. I think that you 100%, if you and your wife decide to have children, you should have paternity leave. Go for it. That is well, I guess it's a good thing that the white men in power voted for maternity leave and nine months off and nothing for us. So you can thank them for that. Well, that is that is something that I completely think that is wrong. It's wrong. And I think that it goes back to the fact that women, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the example that patriarchal, like traditional patriarchal mindsets affect you, too. You should 100 percent get nine months off for if you decide to have a child. And let me say this, while we're getting personal, you should 100%, if you date a man who wants nine months off, leave him. Okay, that's not why? the guy you want providing why? for you. Why? Uh, why? No, I wouldn't do it, and I don't know any man who would who would want to do it. It'd be nice to get a few weeks off, you know, maybe go down to Kauai, have a luau, that'd be fun. Nine sure. months off? No. Um, but let me, uh, I, I, I certainly, I think you went to the worst example right off the bat, and I think you'll see that mm -hmm. most people don't agree with you on that. So let's go down the list to other examples, because certainly I well, think you would concede, we would both agree, there is an economic argument to be made there uh, yes. as to why we're just talking bottom line dollars and cents with pregnancy. That's not indicative of period 
overall females in the workforce versus men. So let's remove pregnancy from the table. Listen to me. <laughs> but you just said men and women cannot agree. My wife and I agree and every woman on the show. So men and women can agree. You and I don't. But, but, all right, I'm sorry, that was reductive. Okay. A, a fetus is both a separate being and part of your body. And you, you, if you've never experienced it, you cannot understand that. It is, it, it is not separate from your body. It isn't. And if it's not the right time for you to have a baby, and if you lived in a humane society where you could terminate that pregnancy before it's really a fetus, I, you know, there are many, many circumstances in which that, that you, you know, women have to be free to make that choice. It doesn't live on in a spaceship. It doesn't live without, you know, using the mother's body as as its environment, as its host, this is something we have to grapple with. Well, then that why does day 40 matter at all? Sorry? Then why does, this is why I say that your, I understand your middle ground is a more intellectually, I believe, untenable position than even the most radical feminist who believes until it comes out of the womb. If you use the argument that it is a part of your body, it is not a separate life, it is not a separate it being. It is also a separate life and it's a part of your body. It's an and, and sentence. Then what matters is, with day 40? I don't, this is the logic that I, why is there a cutoff then? Because you're at, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be really honest with you. You're asking for a black and white answer for yes. me and I don't have one. What I'm saying is, you know, in my 55 years on the planet, having had two children, having traveled all over the world, having seen many, many women's lives who were ruined and babies' mm -hmm. lives who were ruined by women not being able to control their reproduction. I've lost you and- That's okay. No, yes, I can hear you. Don't stress. You can just hit the button to resend us video. It's, uh, this is what happens with, with phones in big cities. I blame big AT&T. Sorry about that. Um, and, you know, and having thought deeply about this issue, we're not going to have a, an intellectually pure um, solution for any policies because there aren't any. But what we are going to have is humane policies that take into account uh, women's and babies' needs. And in my view, a humane society makes contraception readily available, uh, gives women access to abortion if they need it, and the morning after pill in the first trimester, um, and uh, and you know makes adoption really easy and 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 supports all children. Um, make sure there's food and, and education and clothing for all children so that, you know, more women would not need to choose abortion. I'm, I'm with the pro-lifers on that, and I'm with the pro-choicers on women really needing to control their bodies, at least for the first um, trimester, where I don't know how to get you back, but that's... Oh, that, well, I, I just hit, if you, there's a little video icon, I believe. Hey, Jerry, yeah, you can help her tell where that is, a little exact, video icon. A little blue, a little blue video icon. Um, I'm, I'm sure yeah. you can imagine where, where I would disagree with you, not as a man, yeah. but a, a, intellectually along the trail of there. there's nothing humane if, there we go, uh, there's nothing humane if it's a life. And that's why I was so interested in your well, essay when you, know, you said it is... You it, about societies where men control women's reproduction from the... No, 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 no. See, you keep going back to oh. the male wanting to control a woman. There are plenty of women, half who agree with this position that it is a life. Yeah. There is nothing yeah. humane about ending another life that is not your own. The only question that matters, and this is one that mm -hmm. I think, Naomi, especially if you're talking about a platform where you want to bring people together, you have mm -hmm. no chance of convincing someone who is pro-life, mm -hmm. and certainly no chance of convincing the radical that's feminist left today if you cannot answer the question as to whether it is a life or not. And that's, again, why, where I posit the only consistent yeah. line of logic is conception. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there's no difference at day 39, day 40, um, or uh, exiting the womb. There's no difference. So, so I, I, I'm glad you, you brought this up. I, I'm, I'm going to be a good daughter before Mother's Day. My mom is waiting for me to go join her. I'm out here visiting my parents, so I need to hop off, but okay. I will wrap up, you know, or respond to what yes, you just go ahead. said. Uh, you are absolutely right that I cannot and will not give you a black and white answer on this. And that's because I have a sense of integrity. Um, and mm -hmm. from my lived experience as a woman and as a mother, as a woman, I cannot. Come on, Naomi. That's know, not, that's, uh, this, no, that, this identity that's politics keep bringing, as a woman, a sense of integrity. Okay, how about this? If you don't have an answer, right tonight, if you were driving home and you thought there were a dog on the road, but you okay. weren't quite sure and you could slow down, you wouldn't kill the dog. It's not about you. It's about the dog at that point. No, if you don't have an answer, then you can err on the side of not ending a life. I think that's. Think in, I think that's. I think the day after conception is is a dog. I mean, I don't think these are apples and oranges. They're mm. not the same thing. And I'm a very, you know, I have a religious faith. I have, 
reverence for all life, I sure. do not believe they are the same. I think that as the being develops and matures, it becomes much more serious morally. And these are deep, deep issues. But it's because they're deep issues, I don't think they should be reduced to sound bites. I don't. I don't and think they should be reduced to sound bites either, but I don't think they should be reduced to policies. You just listed off, by the way, completely anti-libertarian, about 12 that I counted policies, which involved my direct subsidization <laughs> of someone else's opinion, despite the fact that there's no answer there. So if we don't have an answer, the libertarian and both of us, common ground, would have to say, well, we can't spend money on somebody else's answer or opinion. And of course, uh -huh. we would have to err on the side of life if we don't have an answer. Or err on the side of liberty and let women make that choice for themselves. Uh, no, not if we're talking about a different a different body, a different body with different DNA, different fingers, toes, eyes, ears, central that's nervous system. Body. That's a life. That that's a very important body. argument. Until it's born, it is in the woman's body. Well, there you go. So up until the womb. <laughs> Uh, but I know you have to go. Thank you so much, Naomi Wolf. It is. But also, I just want to say the platform is for everybody. It's not about pro-life, pro-choice. Yes, let me, let's get that website again one more time. Sure, it's dailyclout.io. So come on, we'd love to have you as a guest on our platform. A hundred percent. Thank you so much, Naomi. I appreciate it. And uh, I will continue wrapping up uh, here without you because I know, I know, I appreciate being good for Mother's Day. Wow, that video clip was something else. Isn't that right, Dave? I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah, it was uh, clipped from the live show every Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's the best way you can just tune in, watch, and uh, you know, comment with us live. If you want to support this content because <laughs> no one else is going to, CriderShop.com. Hit the like, share, more importantly, buy a shirt. Because there are some people who will be lucky to have shirts in China. They're starving.